Hello everyone, this is Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to another edition of the Batwoman Season 2 Review Series and today I am going to be talking about Episode 3, Batgirl Magic, which I have just finished watching and this episode marks the Arrowverse debut of two characters who we saw make their first appearance in this episode. The first one was Victor Zass, to a lot of hardcore fans who know that name, Victor Zass is one of the main villains of the Batman Rogues Gallery and he made his Arrowverse debut in this episode. And for those of you who also know what he's about, Victor Zass is a hitman who goes around killing people but he also writes scars on his body as tally marks for each of his victims. And we also finally saw the live-action debut of Sophia. Now, Sophia has been a name that's been mentioned for a couple of episodes now, going all the way back to near the end of Season 1. So we finally got to see her in the flesh, and we got to learn what she's all about and why her and Alice have the connection that they have. And this episode was really, really good, and Javisia Leslie so far is doing an excellent job, and she's already won me over as the new Batwoman. And we also saw a couple of new upgrades to the Batwoman costume, and a whole new look for her as well. So this episode had a lot of things going on, and we learned a little bit about where and what has happened to Kate Kane. So... Let's get right to it. Let's talk about episode 3, Batgirl Magic. So this episode kicks off with the live action debut of Victor Zass as we see him murder a cheating husband and his mistress in a ritzy Gotham hotel. And then he realises that he's running out of space on his body for his scars before adding two more to his own head. Ugh. He then breaks into Hamilton Dynamics and steals a list of names. Meanwhile, we see Ryan struggles in the field as Batwoman, in part because she says the Batwoman costume doesn't fit her. Mary Kane now has ownership of Kate's bar, and she agrees to hire Ryan as a bartender in order to fool Ryan's parole officer. Luke, Mary and Ryan find out about the Hamilton Dynamics robbery, and Ryan recognises Victor's ass because they used to run around in the same circles together. She makes her way to Zaz's apartment and confronts him, but he pivots to talking about how she clearly doesn't seem comfortable in the Batsuit. Once the team discovers the list of names, Ryan decides to meet Zaz as herself, offering him some of Ma Mary's money in exchange for killing Alice, all the while bugging his phone. Luke is able to hack Zaz's phone and realises that Zaz's was hired by, you guessed it, Sapphire. They later realise that the list of names signifies everyone who was treated with the Desert Rose after the Bat Bite incident, just as Zazis is about to attack Mary. Mary s Ryan suits up and saves her in her brand new Bat suit, which later gets written up in the newspaper and she becomes the talk of the town. Luke is still hesitant to fully trust Ryan, but Mary argues that there's little to no chance of Kate ever coming back. Later, Mary holds a traditional remembrance ceremony in memory of Kate but Luke still has hope that she's alive and that she could come back. The crows focus their efforts on the snake bite, a new drug that is laced with Scarecrow's fear toxin. So we're also getting some references of the Scarecrow as well. Maybe we might actually see Jonathan Crane make his live action debut in the Arrowverse. Two of the crows later determine the mysterious leader behind the snakebite operation, Black Mask, is behind it, although they don't know his true identity. So, Victor Zass, Sophia, Scarecrow, and now Black Mask. Alright, this is looking good so far. Meanwhile, we see Sophie and Alice get kidnapped and taken into Coriana and receive an audience with Sophia, who we actually see for the first time. Sophia confronts Alice about unleashing the Desert Rose Cure on Gotham and reveals that she didn't target Kate's plane, but is willing to help her find out who did. As the Whisper explains to Sophie, the beef between Sophia and Alice began because Alice broke out of the cardinal rules of the island, not to steal the Desert Rose. Alice ultimately discovers that Sophia has Kate's necklace and Sophia insinuates that she has Kate's held captive but only plans to release her if Alice does something for her. Alice and Sophie are then drugged and then return to Gotham. 
Jacob is able to hack into Kate's phone and finds a photograph of a painting from Jack Napier. Now, who knows who Jack Napier is? That's right, the clown prince of crime himself, the Joker, with a note from Kate indicating that it could be tied to Sophia. When he asks Sophie about it, she tells him that she believes that Kate is alive and well. And that pretty much wraps up the end of episode three. Overall, great episode. Love the new look for Batwoman. The new wig looks much better instead of the old wig, which looked a bit out of place. So we've got mentions of Jack Napier, a.k.a. the Joker, Scarecrow, Black Mask, Sophia has made her first live-action appearance, and we've seen the Arrowverse debut of Victor Zass. So this episode had lots going for it, and this was a lot of fun. And I'm really interested to see how this is all going to be tied together. Now, as far as Kate Kane possibly being alive and being held captive, time will tell really how that is going to play out, but I think there's going to be an actual twist to this. But overall... This was a really good episode, and as I said, Javisir Leslie is doing an excellent job, and she's already won me over as the new Batwoman, but time will tell how her character will grow as Season 2 progresses. So that's it from me. I'm going to wrap this up now. What did you think of Episode 3 of Batwoman? Did you enjoy it? How do you feel about the connection between Alice and Sophia? Do you think this is all part of a big elaborate plan? Or do you think we could actually see these two go at it at some point? And do you think she's bluffing about possibly holding Kate Kane hostage? And what about the Jack Napier painting? Where do you think that will go? And also, what about the mention of the Scarecrow? Do you think it's possible we could actually see the Scarecrow make an appearance in the Arrowverse in Batwoman? You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below, and I will be back next time for another edition of the Batwoman Season 2 review series, where I'll be talking about Episode 4. So until next time, take care everybody, and stay safe.